All right, so it's four o'clock, so we're going to kick things off. Welcome everyone to the latest um, in the Simplify's first webinar series. This is a new webinar series that we're kicking off, and the first topic that we're going to talk about is the power of inbound marketing. And um, we're going to see today if you're really using it effectively. Um, welcome to our the first episode in the webinar. It is going to go over the next 12 weeks. Every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Um, GMT time, we are going to have a different webinar, and it might be about inbound marketing, it might be about multi-channel marketing. We're going to cover a range of different topics. So hopefully we'll see you at many more of the webinars in the future. Uh, you may have noticed that you've been muted upon entry. So if you have any questions, please put them into the chat and I'll answer them whenever I can. And if we run out of time, I will email you directly and answer them then as well. Um, you will notice as well in there, there is a link. That link is a callback. So should you want to know more about Simplify or more about inbound marketing or how Simplify can help you, be sure to click that link and fill out the tiny form and we will get back to you straight away. So before we start, I would encourage you to grab a notebook and pen, just in case you want to take down some notes throughout the webinar. It's not overly long, don't worry, I'm not going to keep you around all day. Um, but just in case you do learn something that you haven't learned before, or maybe you want to share something with a colleague or friend. And just on that note, if you do think that this webinar is great and you want to share it with someone maybe in your team or maybe a friend who works in the same field as you, please share it on with them. It will be on on demand after and you will get a link to watch it. So yeah, be sure to share it. Um, as I said, this is the first in a 12 week series. So we will be covering other topics and we will be sending you out the invites via email, just like you got the invite for this one. So before we kick off, I'm sure there is a few clients in here of ours that know a lot about Simplify already, but for those that don't, we're going to talk quickly about a few hours Simplify. So Simplify, if you follow us on Instagram, then you will have noticed this view. This is right outside one of our offices in Port Stewart, which is where I'm coming from today. Um, we're just based along the north coast of Ireland, uh, but we do have offices in uh, Belfast, London and the US uh, as well in Boston. Um, sorry, we're just checking that everyone can hear me. Can everyone hear me? Can you write into the, the chat box if you can? Yeah, so Stephen saying here you will, great. Um, oh, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Just We were just thinking there uh, to make sure. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. So back to Zimplify. So if you follow on us, us on Instagram, you will have definitely saw photos like this before. This is right outside our offices. We're based in Port Stewart, um, but we do have offices in uh, mainland UK as well, in London. We have a head office in Belfast as well. And then we have a US headquarters in Boston, which is really, really exciting. Um, Simplify was founded by Michael Carlin. So this is Michael here. He is the founder and CEO. He worked for 20 years for the insurance firm AIG, worked all over the world and came home to Northern Ireland to set up his own business. But during this process, Michael found that he was constantly running in place while trying to figure out exactly what was working and what's not, which is a lot, which is a problem that a lot of marketers face, whether, you know, if something's working great, but how do you know if, if it's good or how do you know to spend more money on it? Or maybe you shouldn't be spending money on it if something isn't working. So that's a, a common problem within marketing. And it's something that Michael picked up on really, really um, early on. So he wanted to figure out what marketing, marketing activity was working well. And he was frustrated having to pull together multiple reports from multiple different monoliners. So he might be tracking his email marketing on one platform, but his uh, ROI spend on another, and then the sales rate, everything was on different platforms. And it becomes a real hassle. And that is why he decided to set up Zimplify. So he could see that digital marketing was become a way, becoming a way of life. Um, for businesses of all sizes, whether they were startups or huge enterprises. So he needed something to be available as a SaaS product. He wanted it to be easy to use, he wanted it to be reasonably priced, and he wanted it to be built with the latest and leading edge technology. So he found some of the 
brightest guys in business and marketing and in technology rallied them around with one shared vision to simplify digital marketing. So that was five years ago. Fast forward to 2019, and here we are at Simplify. We now have 25 plus staff in offices all around the world, like we said. Uh, and we have teams in marketing, sales, tech. You know, we have a, a wealth of digital experts in Simplify. So we have clients and agencies from a range of different sectors as well. And to keep things really straightforward we are a full stack digital marketing software and services company some of you might already know us use us every day and in simpler terms that means that we make it easy to market and grow your business and our software shows companies exactly what marketing is working in real time so you can make educated decisions so about me, as I said, my name is Naomi. Or I can't remember did I introduce myself or not. My name is Naomi. I am the digital content marketer here at Simplify. I have been here for about a year. I am some level four qualified and have a degree in marketing, fashion marketing. I previously worked as a journalist before I came onto Team Simplify, uh, but I quickly realized that digital is the way forward and I wanted to get involved with digital um just so to be a little bit more personal and to get to know me more i do love an office prank and a good joke um as my colleagues would definitely agree and at the minute i'm trying to become a vegetarian which is harder said than done if any of you are vegetarians you will know that so on to the webinar and enough about me and, and simplify we are going to cover the overview of inbound marketing we're going to talk about the four main stages of inbound marketing at a very basic level and um, we're going to discuss the benefits how to create a powerful landing page multi-channel marketing and then we're going to discuss eight key inbound marketing strategies that you can implement today that will help your business and then we're going to discuss simplify's approach to inbound marketing so something that we hear a lot from clients, uh, from leads and, and different people that we talk to is that they think they are doing, I'm just going to move this up here. Um, they think they're doing inbound marketing and they think they're doing it really well when in fact they're, they're not really, they're, they might be doing a little bit of it, but they could be really optimizing it for much better use. So in short, in, inbound marketing is about creating valuable experiences that have a positive impact on people and on your business. So you attract prospects, customers to your website. Instead of you going out and business, they are actively coming to you via different methods. Um, so you attract prospects and customers to your website through blogs and relevant, helpful content. So you're there to create value for your prospects instead of just selling them something from the get-go. So once they arrive, you engage with them using conversational tools like email and chat, and you promise continued value. So it's not just a one-stop shop. You've got them through the door and that's it. It's really about turning that customer or that lead, so right into a customer and right into an advocate of your brand and then finally like I just mentioned that you delight them by continuing to act as an empathetic empathetic advisor and expert so you're there to show them continued success you're not just there to sell them one thing you're there to nurture them so inbound marketing is an unobtrusive method of marketing that significantly improves online online users experience and shows your company in a really positive light. So it's customer centric that focuses on building relationships with current and future customers. So you're on, you're about to create long-term relationships with these people. So inbound marketing revolves around the production and promotion of helpful content such as articles, blogs, videos, eBooks, social media posts, infographics, all this content that you're going to promote and uh, create really really, really, really great value for your customer. Um, you want to attract visitors to your website and convert them into leads, then into customers. So one of the great things about inbound marketing is that it's a perfect marketing strategy for companies of every size. You don't need to be a huge marketer. Uh, you don't have to have a huge marketing team to do this successfully. And you can implement it at every stage of development. So unlike outbound marketing, uh, which I will just click on to, Outbound marketing, um, it is unlike outbound marketing where you're creating ads and trying to capture your audience's attention. 
Inbound marketing is a strategy that identifies the customers who are niddling through their way, through their internet, in search of what they want and how to solve their problems. Everyone has a problem. They want to solve it. How does your company or organization solve that problem? So just to give you a bit of an idea, here we've got two tables, inbound sales and outbound sales. So inbound marketing, you attract the customer through blog posts, through articles, videos, social media, organic SEO, whereas before outbound would have been directly reaching out to prospects through cold calling. We all hate cold calling and I really think it's a thing of the past. Um, cold emails, that's just either going into spam or you're going to delete it. Radio and TV advertisements, forum research and billboards. So that's very much a traditional way of marketing, whereas inbound is very up to date. You're listening to the client or the customer's needs and you're answering their questions without them even having to ask them themselves. So it actually, one of the, the huge benefits of inbound marketing is it costs 62% less than outbound and the average cost per lead of outbound marketing is $373, whereas inbound is $143. So that just gives you an idea of how effective it can be. So now we're going to go on to the four main stages of inbound marketing. So this is a very basic level and this is really stripped back. Um, it's the funnel, I suppose, that everyone, every business should have. Um, although every business's funnel, buyer's funnel, will be uh, tailored to their own needs and their own customers. So no matter what size your business is, you can relate to this funnel. Attract strangers into your website until they become visitors you will convert them into leads you will close them until they become customers and then you will delight them until they become promoters or advocates of your brand and you can see here at the bottom of this um, really simple table these are all the different types of content that you can use to do that so as we said previous you will use content at all these different stages and the content will be different and it will be tailored to suit the stage of the funnel that that lead or prospect is at so the attract area, you might create a con content for the awareness stage that outlines the problem in a really straightforward way. So your, cust your customer has a problem, you need to solve it and you need to outshine your competitors. So a great way to do this is by writing blog posts, tip sheets, overviews and other short factual content which will show them to your website. Then you will move on to convert these visitors and turn them into leads. So you want to capture their details and get their email addresses and names. So this stage calls for explanatory pieces, line up um, solutions, such as ebooks, white papers, and informative videos. So you really want to show them why they would consider you over your competitor. And you're going to get their details through landing pages, which we will talk about later on in the webinar. Um, but they need to be, you know coax to give you their details why why should they give you the, your why should they give you their details their email address then you will move they will now be an active lead you will have their details and you want to close them into a customer so you want to focus on the value when the customer enters the decision stage so now they're really down to the nitty-gritty and they're looking at you and your competitor and um, this is the time to present case studies offer free assessment testimonials highlight the features and maybe what's your competitive age, what's your USP, this is where you're really going to shine and try and convince that person to become your customer. And then they sign up, they sign on the dotted line, they're your customer, then it's, it doesn't stop there, you need to delight them and you need to turn them into an advocate of your brand. So deliver content in the final stage that helps customers have a really great experience, whether it's onboarding or whenever they're buying the product or service. And it's a great place to post how to format an article, so how to get the most out of the product, how to use a certain area of your software, um, all these kind of things that's going to add it the added value to them after they have purchased. So just going into it in a little bit more detail. So the attract area, you want to attract the people who are most likely to become your customers onto your website and social media platforms. So you want to hope that they become leads. Creating a content strategy to ensure that the entire team is focused on the same goal and objectives is really, really important. So you need to Create a blog if you haven't already. A blog is a great tool to do this. Your website copy um, is going to inform them and tell them more about your, your product or service, your social media posts, and your email campaigns. They all need to be really slick and really um, concise. So the social media is powerful, and you do need to ensure that you have a strong presence across all available platforms. Um, and it allows you to freely share new and old content, which might still be current now. 
You want to engage with them and interact on the platforms that they're actively using. So you need to figure out where they hang out online and go there, be there. So starting up a blog is a fantastic way to get people onto your site. You can promote it on your social media. You can write about topics that they are actively searching for. You always have to be thinking, what are they typing into Google? Um, and companies, just a few stats around this and how important it is. Companies that blog have a 97% more inbound links directly, directing traffic to their site. And companies that blog have 434% more pages indexed by search engines. So there you go, the proof's in the pudding. Um, and any, before anyone thinks that it's all about the fluffy marketing and you wanna be writing blog posts and it's all very airy theory, um, and by marketing tactics don't just generate leads, they generate revenue as well. So another great stat is 57% of businesses said their company has acquired customers through both their company blog and 57% said the same of LinkedIn. So LinkedIn's a great uh, tool as well to use. So as you can see here, your blog is a great way to get your content out there, keywords and social scheduling. So then they have they're on your website. They know what your company is and what it's about. You want to convert them and you want to make them give you their email address. That's what it's all about. You need to convert these prospects who have visited your site and make them understand why that they should consider your company over the competition out there. So communicate with them in any way that you can via really powerful and strong marketing messages, forms, meetings, or emails. And when you create that relationship with them, you can answer their direct questions and focus on how you can help them. You're always there to create value and to help that lead until they become a loyal customer. And then, so they've actively give you their information through a landing page or a web form. You want to close them then. So your prospects have moved down the funnel and smoothly. You are on the right track. So now you need to turn those, these leads into a customer. You know them. You know their email address. You know where they've been on your website. So you know a little bit more about them. And through all this information, you can tailor your marketing messages and create a really personalized approach whenever you're trying to close that seal. So you want to nurture each lead according to their individual interests and wants and needs. You want to look at what pages that they've visited on your site. You can see exactly what services that they're interested in or products that they're interested in. You can see what content that they've downloaded and you can see how long that they have maybe been on your website. Are they looking at your pricing page, which would um, make them a really strong lead. Um, create an email campaign and follow what links that they click on. If they react to a call to action button, then that's fantastic and they're doing what you want them to do. You want to follow up with them with another email. So don't just leave it at that. You want to constantly follow up with them and create a workflow or a nurtured automated journey and until they become a customer. So then they've signed on the dotted line, which is fantastic. But as I said before, it doesn't just stop there. Inbound marketing is all about making your customer happy and creating a really fantastic buying experience from the very first click right the way through their, the product or service lifecycle. So you want them to recommend this product to everyone that they know. It's really important to engage with them and make your customer successful, giving them a delightful experience with your customer. Your customers, hopefully all of them, are your biggest fans and you need to understand them on an individual basis to help them succeed. So the more you know about them and you know, the more you know about their individual needs on a business level, the more that you can tailor and recommend further products down the product, um, the buyer's funnel, uh, which they will appreciate. You know, they won't think that it's pushy or salesy. They'll really appreciate that. So uh, other mediums that you can do that through are surveys, smart content, which is personalized and tailored content, and social monitoring, so you can see what people are saying online about you. So as I said, this whole format, the attract, convert, close, and delight, is a really basic way to explain inbound marketing, but every business is different, and Zimplify have our own inbound marketing methodology. This is how we approach inbound marketing. So not only do we provide the tools to grow, we also provide built-in features to monitor and manage all your marketing activities. So right from the very start, we are, you know, we think it's crucial and really, really important to identify your inbound marketing strategy and identify your target market, your buyer persona. So you can create your inbound marketing strategy using our fully integrated persona builder. There's a buyer funnel and a content portal. So you can put all the right content in front of the right person at the right time. 
through our attract stage, which is the next one down, you can reach anyone, anywhere, anytime, with any device, with our multi-channel marketing platform. So you could integrate your website, your email, your social, mobile and PPC all in one place and monitor how everything's going at one time. Then you will move down into engage. So you want to drive real-time multi-channel leads and engagement with integrated landing pages, which we will talk about. Pop-up forms, live chat, SMS, QR codes, all of these different mediums. You want to engage with them through that. You will then nurture the leads through automated journeys, so through automated email journeys, and drive more engagement through these automated email journeys. So they will be personalized, you will know when to send them, they will be sent at the right time, and your lead or your customer will get them when they really appreciate it. You can build advanced automation flows and send customized emails to prospects at every stage of the funnel. Then you will convert your leads into customers. Seamlessly manage and convert new leads through our fully integrated sales pipeline. And then not only do we do all of this, we also look at insights and analytics really, really uh, critically. So not only do we provide the tools to grow, we also provide the built-in features to monitor and manage all of your marketing activities. And you can see what's working and what's not in real time. So on to the next part of the webinar, we're going to talk about the benefits of inbound marketing. These are the five main benefits of inbound marketing. Uh, high quality lead gen, cost effective marketing strategy, long term relationships with customers, brand awareness, recognition and trust and educating prospects at every touch point. So going into a little more detail on each of them. So like I said before, we would hear from a lot of the time from our clients that they think that they're doing and by marketing, you know, they think that they're doing it all, but they're not really, they're not optimizing on every single one of these benefits. And if you've got all of these benefits going at one time, then your business will grow and it will work. So high quality lead gem. You, more website tra traffic inevitably brings with it more leads. Um, inbound marketing will help you generate more leads and customers for your business. So on average, inbound marketing generates 54% more leads than traditional outbound marketing. And inbound marketing generates quality leads as opposed to just picking up the phone and speaking to people that you might not know your business, who might not know what you do. Um, with inbound marketing, they have already initiated that touch point or they've, they've recognized you online or they've been to your website and so there's a, a small relationship already built there they know who you are they know what you do to some extent anyways so cost-effective marketing strategy it really is as I said before it costs less for inbound marketing compared to outbound marketing I'm just going to move this down to the bottom of the screen and I'll just check um, to see Everyone's okay. Um, so yeah, cost-effective marketing strategy. Um, the content used in inbound marketing campaigns like blog posts, videos, or an email campaign sent is, real, is relatively affordable to produce and can generate leads for years to come. So one piece of content could be repurposed time and time again. It could be updated um, with recent stats or you know maybe you've offered new services. That will cost you much less than outbound marketing. And Inbound marketing generates three times more leads than traditional marketing methods at a 62% lower cost. So another benefit of inbound marketing is that it can generate leads for a company of all sizes. So like we said before, inbound marketing isn't for you know, a one size business. It's for any, it can be used as a startup. It can be used at a huge governmental level. long-term relationship with customers. So we're talking here about the delight stage of the um, inbound marketing funnel. You wanna delight your customer. You've got them through the line. You wanna create a long-term relationship with that customer. And marketers have used a multitude of short-term marketing strategies over the years. Um, some of them have been more successful than others. Sooner or later, most short-term strategies backfire in one way or another. Whereas inbound marketing is definitely a long-term approach. It's based on being genuine, authentic, and being helpful to your audience about creating value and showing them why that they should choose you over your competition. When a customer decides to follow you on social media or subscribes to your email list or your newsletter, you can consider that, that you've earned a loyal brand follower. There is 
so much noise out there online at the minute. So even if they've give you their email address or followed you on social media, that's a great way in to someone. It allows you to build on this loyalty with long-term and stable business relationships with your brand followers. And moving on to that, you can create fantastic brand awareness, recognition, and trust with inbound marketing. So building a trusting relationship is really important in 2019 in this digital marketing landscape that we're working in. You, with the amount of competition out there, you have to give your leads and prospects a reason why that they should choose you. Why should they do business with you? So sharing helpful information through inbound marketing practices will ensure that you build trust and rapport with your audience. Another priceless benefit of inbound marketing is the creation of brand awareness, trust, credibility, um, all these things that are really, really important in 2019. So by providing valuable and reliable information to users, continuously you're building a reputation and relationship with potential customers all across the globe. And then again, it's all about that long-term life cycle. You wanna educate prospects at every touch point. So this touches on multi-channel marketing and why it's so important to get in front of your customer at every touch point. You wanna educate them. It's about providing value, about educating them on a topic that they might not be aware about, or you wanna show them how you can solve their, their problems, their business problems. 47% um, of buyers viewed three to five pieces of content before engaging with a sales rep. That's a stat from Demand Gen in 2016 and um, that's probably went up by now um, as consumers online consumers I'm sure everyone here will agree with me we absorb so much content on a daily basis that you want to stand out from the crowd what are you giving your customer or your prospect or your lead before they became a customer what are you giving them um, are you educating them are you giving them value why should they interact with you? One of the best ways to stay on top of your business is to look to the future, to look for trends, actively educate your following, whether that's on email or on social, and show them the benefit of working with you. So just another few points on inbound marketing. There is obviously uh, a few potential difficulties, but like anything in life, um, there are one of the main inbound, or difficulties with inbound marketing is convincing leadership to assign a budget for inbound marketing as it is a long-term strategy. Um, maybe your manager or your uh, CEO just cares about leads and sales, you know, get them in, get them, you know, make them customers. Um, inbound's a little bit, it's long-term, so it might be a longer sales process. Um, but you need to decide on messaging, you need to find a relevant audience, and of course, costs come with that. So you wanna convince your leadership. It might be hard to convince senior leadership at your company to assign a budget, but the easiest way to do this is to show them that the real value of inbound marketing and show them some statistics. So one of them is companies that focus on inbound marketing save more than $14 for each new customer. The average cost per lead drops 80% after just five months of inbound marketing. Inbound marketing is 10 times more effective in converting leads compared to outbound marketing. So that's your cold calling, your email spam. And companies that produce buyer persona driven content and use inbound content platforms experience a 45% increase in sales accepted leads. So we will talk more about buyer personas um, later on in the webinar. but. It's all, you know, you need to show them stats, show them proof of why that they should adopt this marketing trend. Um, deciding on messaging, you will want to make sure that your message is clear and to the point so that any potential customers who might follow you on social media or click on an email know exactly what they can expect from your business. You don't want to be too wishy-washy. You want to be really straight to the point. But if you do offer a range of services, this can be quite hard. Uh, don't rush into it and take your time deciding on the perfect messaging. You wanna involve the entire team, um, not just your marketing team, get feedback from your sales team, from your, your customer service team, from head management, senior management, and brainstorm different ideas and really solidify that message so that whenever someone does follow you on social media or clicks on an email, that they know what they can expect from your brand or your business. 
You want to find a relevant audience. Uh, so it can be difficult to understand what type of audience that you need to attract, and what type of content that you need to produce to do it. So this makes it crucial and critical to create buyer personas and really make these really detailed, um, which we will discuss later on in the, the webinar as well. And then, like everything, you must deal with cost. So adopting a marketing method, such as inbound marketing, always comes at a cost. So your company will most likely need to hire maybe a copywriter, a content marketer, a graphic designer, and possibly a marketing strategist. Um, or you can outsource to a marketing agency or a marketing automation platform like Simplify. So inbound marketing, it does come with a cost. However, it is proven to cost 62% less than traditional marketing, which we chatted about earlier so you know there is definitely a benefit there 62 percent less i can i can tell you that's a benefit so google um with inbound marketing it is a fantastic way to get google's attention so the internet has fundamentally changed the way people find or share shops and connect with people so 87 percent of people today use a search engine 78% use it to do searches for products and services. So I'm sure we're all seeing my, you would always Google, how can I buy such and such or best value for such and such a product or service. The bottom line is this, if Google can't find you, then no one else can. You need to get ranked on Google and quality content will help you get ranked on those first pages. So inbound marketing will help you get Google's attention. You can show off your expertise and create a range of blogs or articles that your buyer personas will benefit from. So what are your buyer personas typing into Google? What are they searching for? What are their problems? What are their pain points? And you can create content around this. So if you think of your customer's pain point, um, I can't generate leads. On the flip side of that, a title of, for a piece of content is generate leads with inbound marketing. That's just an example, but if you can figure out what their pain point is, you can figure out what they're going to be typing into Google, then you can create content around that that's really going to be valuable and beneficial to them. So the quality content means that you're sharing your expert advice on not only one topic, but that you can talk about a range of different topics around that. So for example, if you were trying to target or maybe you were selling recruitment services, you want to think about the person that's going to be purchasing your product. You want to write blogs on topics that they will find beneficial. So for example, these might be top five interview questions, how to read a blog, how to read body language in an interview. You could write a blog about social media and why it's so important when trying to find new talent for your team or is per communication losing new applicants. These are all just ideas of what that person would be typing into Google and then they can find you through that. And at the bottom line, it creates a sense of trust. So the more that they interact with you, the more that they can, you know, take advice from your blog and get real good, honest tips and tricks on how to become a better person in their role, then they're going to trust you more. And now we are going to talk about landing pages. This is an example of a Simplify landing page, which you can create on the Simplify platform. And um, we have a range of different templates and that you can use, and it just cuts down that time of creating landing pages. It can be really time consuming. So when you do have templates there, it's really great. You change the text and you're good to go. So this is an example. You've got your name, email, company, telephone, employee size, marketing budget. If a, if a lead or leads do fill these details in every day, we know so much more about them whenever we're trying to personalize our approach when we're trying to you know get more information from them so a landing page is one of the most important elements of lead generation and inbound marketing and it can help you turn lots of visitors to your site into visitors on your site into paying customers so by directing your potential customers to specific landing pages through ads or through social media campaigns email newsletters, all these things, you can tailor your marketing messages and content to match their needs. So for example, if you sent out a social media campaign and you directed them straight to your website, you don't know anything about them, you've lost them. Who are they? Why, what pages are they gonna be looking at? Why are they interested in your brand? Whereas by directing them to a tailored landing page that fits the social media ad that they've just clicked on, it's really synonymous and it's really slick, as well as that they are being pushed through the funnel really, really nicely.
So creating powerful landing pages is one a crucial part of inbound marketing. So a landing page is one of the most important elements and can turn lots of your visitors into leads, which we want to do, and then hopefully then leads convert into customers. So the ultimate goal of a landing page is to convert your website visitors into customers as seamlessly as possible. So you don't want to feel, you don't want the, cost, the lead to feel like they have to give you their details. You want to show them oh this is a fantastic piece of content it's going to do x y and z for you you're going to learn x y and z if you just simply pop in your email address you will have this downloadable guide and you can use it at any time i'd be like sure uh, here's my email address so you want to be specific about your goals and know what you want from the landing page so if you don't need any um, information like their phone number or anything like that don't include it be really simple and do what your do your visitors want to give their details in exchange for that piece of content. Is that content good enough for them to give you their email address? Make it clear with a simple call to action button. Research your competitors and take inspiration from them. You also want to stand out from the crowd and create clear call to action buttons. You will also want to use powerful marketing messages to grab their attention. So they've clicked on your ad. The reason why they're on this landing page is they've clicked on something you've put out there, whether it's on an email, a newsletter, a social media ad, or an organic social post. So then you have them, you want to use really powerful and creative language to simply make them think, sure, I'll give them my email address. I really want to know more about this piece of content. So here are a few a few top tips when creating landing pages. There will be another webinar about landing pages and web forms and how to create really uh, powerful and effective landing pages later on in this webinar series. So this is just quite a generalized um, list of top tips. So you want to keep it short and sweet. As I said, you don't want to put in any unnecessary boxes. You want to provide high quality content that inspires confidence and trust. So why should they give you their email address? You want to make sure that they need this piece of content. It's something that's going to provide value for them. You want to have a flawless and professional design that is synonymous with your brand. So that's another amazing thing that Simplify's platform can do. Um, you can create really tailored landing pages that look exactly like your website. So they don't feel like they've been pushed to a spam ad or a spam page. You know, it's really seamless and professional. You want to have clear call to action buttons. You don't want to have too many. You want to have one thing that you want them to do. What do you want them to do? Download, put in their email address, make that really clear. Tell them exactly what to do. You want to create eye-catching headliners and use subheadings to explain further. So you will be adding more value on this landing page. You want to make them an irresistible offer. So whether that's a download, an ebook, an infographic, whatever you think they can't resist, that's what it's got to be. You want to use your branding colors and images to your advantage. Only ask for the information you need. Make sure that your landing pages are mobile optimized. So if they are searching on a mobile, which nine times out of 10 we are doing in 2019, you want to make sure that they're not being secluded or you're losing out on that, those leads. A landing page is a great place to show off your testimonials. So you can include a few lines there from one of your clients and show that lead what they could get from working with your brand or your business and make sure it loads quickly, followed by a thank you page so that they know their details have been accepted and they will get their download. Uh, another great way to do this is through an autoresponder and into their and a post entry page and an autoresponder straight into their email address. Um, and it just seems really professional and you're getting them then in their email with maybe more content that you think that they would benefit from. Now we're going to chat about multi-channel marketing. Again, in next week's or week three webinar, we're going to talk about multi-channel marketing on a much more um, in-depth scale. So again, I'm just going over it quite briefly here, but multi-channel marketing is a huge benefit to any business and it's a really important part of inbound marketing so millions of companies around the world depend on loads of different touch points but are they effectively marketing across all of these touch points you know in the right way or are they even using the right channels that their customers are on so a great example of this um to put it into perspective is a few weeks ago facebook and instagram was down i'm sure we all know of that it was everywhere in the headlines businesses could have lost 
loads of money on ad revenue. Um, but as well as that, on a personal level, we were all thinking, what do we do with our time? Because social media is such a huge part of our lives in 2019. So a huge part of this, a, a massive learning outcome from this outage was that multi-channel marketing is so important. So it's incredibly important to make sure that you're on different touch points. The ironic thing about it is that Facebook had to take to Twitter to tell people about the outage. So even Facebook is using multi-channel marketing. Um, you need to create all these different touch points for your audience um, because they don't rely solely on one social media platform and they're on different uh, social media platforms. They're on different, they use their email, they're on your website, they're on your blog. It's really important to be on all of these different channels at one time and not to rely too much on one marketing channel. Yes, it might be really great for you and your business, but it's also important to think outside the box. So social media is obviously a fantastic tool with an abundance of benefits, but we don't own it. Um, we rely on other people like Mark Zuckerberg and the Facebook team. And this, the Facebook and Instagram outage was just a great example of this. So it can be taken away from us at any time. And it's really important to, to keep that in the back of your head. But things that you do own are your website, your blog, your email list. And it's really important to nurture them and to use them really, really effectively and not just focus too much on one platform. So with Simplify's integrated campaigns, um, integrated marketing is the execution of a single strategy across multiple channels. So on Simplify's platform, it's all segmented into your owned, earned and paid. And you can add any channel in there. There's hundreds in there already. Whether you're launching your campaign across page, social or um, more, you can save time by launching your marketing campaign from one platform. So there's no more logging in and out. So that's just an example of how Simplify can help you use multi-channel marketing effectively. So I'm just gonna check the chat box again, make sure, no problem. Um, so now we're gonna talk about those amazing inbound marketing strategies that you can adopt right now that will help your business. So the first one up, is to design an amazing website. I'm sure we all have websites. Um, any business in 2019 should have one. Um, in, today's and, in today's day and age, having a web presence is a must and your website is the place where your potential customers will go whenever they learn about your company or your services. So how do you, how do you create an amazing website? You wanna make sure that your website copy is up to date and is filled with powerful marketing messages that will resonate with your buyer persona. When writing website copy, you will need to take special care to use the right language and terminology. If you're going after uh, finance directors, you're gonna to talk to them differently than if you're going after teenagers who use Snapchat, for an example. Um, it's all about the language and you wanna to talk to your customer in the right way. Um, what kind of language you're going to use will largely depend on your target audience, of course, and in general, your web copy needs to be understandable and relatable. You want to make sure and include all relevant information and make sure that it's continuously updated. Um, so if your services or products are developing, you need to reflect this on your website, as well as all your contact information. Um, your website needs to contain all the essential information that your customer will need to make their decision and to, to decide to go with you over a competitor. So this includes team information, credentials, your testimonials, your case studies, your location, your working hours, all these details need to be continuously updated and creating detailed staff pages are fantastic. You should always pay special attention to creating these pages and introduce your team to your potential customer. So with inbound marketing, like we said about creating that long-term relationship, you wanna develop that relationship and you want your customer to get to know your team and what they can do for you. So if you've got an array of staff that are experts in their field, show that, show them off and, and tell people, we have a team here that can help your business today. Put in their face, their photographs, put faces to names. And while it might not be at the top of your priority list in the overall marketing strategy, it really shouldn't be overlooked. Depending on your tone of voice, you can get really fun with this. You can include a few facts about each member of staff, professional or personal, and let your potential customer familiarize themselves with your team. You want to embrace a modern design. So having a website with modern design, which is also mobile optimized, um, is really important. Um, you want to 
you want to create an amazing um, experience from the get-go. People do judge books by covers and if your website isn't up to scratch, they're going to hit the X and go back to Google and see what the next option down the list is. And use realistic photos. There is nothing more cringy than those really awful stock photos. So you should use actual photos of your company and of your uh, offices where you can and your employees rather than generic stock photos. Obviously from time to time we have to use uh, stock photos um, whether that's in content or not but you should just make informed decisions before just picking the first one you see. So now we've talked a lot about buyer personas throughout the webinar so far. We're going to talk about them a little bit more and in case you don't know what a buyer persona is, it is your perfect customer. It is the person that you want to sell to every single time. Um, so it's it's a fictional gen generalized character that outlines the various goals and challenges among your potential key audience. So they help create reliable and realistic representations of your key segments, and they're based on your customer insights. So they can be used to build PPC audiences, identify marketing channels, identify SEO keywords, um, all these different things. So you wanna look at demographics. So what's their age, what's their gender, what's their education level, their annual income. Um, these might not be applicable to your uh, buyer persona, but they're all questions that you should ask. They, you could look at their hobbies and interests, their challenges and pain points, their goals, their sources. It's really important to remember that you will need to revisit and update your personas frequently. So these things might change, but they're all great starter points to develop your buyer persona. And here are some typical questions that you would ask yourself. What is their job role? What's their title? Where are they at in the company? Do they make informed decisions? Um, how is their job measured? What skills are required? What knowledge and tools do they use? How do they access their information? So how can you get in front of them with your information? Um, all really important questions you should ask. And with Simplify's um, buyer, the persona, uh, the buyer persona developer, um, all these questions are really easily answered. So here's an example of a buyer persona in Simplify. So we cover the top keywords, the channels that they use, the marketing messages, their goals and objectives, and then their basic demographics there to the left-hand side. These are stored on our platform. So when we are creating content, it's really easy to think, what would a head of marketing team, what's their marketing message? What are they typing into Google? I can't just think, I'm gonna go and look at the persona. So it just keeps things really, really easily found. The next inbound marketing strategy is to produce great content. We've talked a lot about content so far in the webinar and we can't reinforce the message enough that it is so important. Content builds relationships. Relationships are built on trust and trust drives revenue. You need to show someone why they should pick you. There is so much competition out there. Why should they pick you? You can do this through content. So with Content, um, a, lot of, a lot of the time we would hear from clients, uh, we don't know what content to produce, what can I do? Oh, I've got nothing to write about. There's loads of things out there. You can use yourself as inspiration. So like we chatted about the, the Meet the Team page on your website, develop that further. Create a blog series on Meet the Team. Showcase your experts um, in-house or maybe explain what you do or where, where they've came from. You could also look at news or current events. So if you just type in the field that you're working in, whether it's finance, whether it's in marketing, type that into Google, go to the news tabs, find the most up-to-date news article, share that or create a blog post around it. Really hot topic, people are gonna be searching for it and it's great for you to be a credible source. You can create lists. Everyone loves lists, to-do lists and top 10 things to generate more leads, things like that that are easily to, to, easy to digest. Um, you can turn this into an infographic maybe or a more extended blog. You can take your audience behind the scenes, another great way to fam let your audience familiarize themselves with your team. So show off your, your offices. Um, do you have any like fun days with your team? Take them behind the scenes or show them how you, how you produce your product or service. What's your day-to-day -day life like? What's your day, not personal life, maybe if that's applicable, but um, I'm talking more in a business sense, obviously. Um, or another great idea is create a weekly or monthly content roundup. Round up. So this could be a weekly or monthly newsletter. Um, it could be a roundup on social media. Did you see this, this, and this post that we scheduled earlier in the week? 
in 2019 because there is so many different sources of information and news out there. Um, we're obviously a nation of scrollers. People can scroll past your content really easily. You shouldn't take it personal, but you should remind them what's there. And here are just some ideas of how you can get started. If you haven't already, you should create a blog. Blog posts are the main type of content that you should be produ producing for your website. It should be ungated. This is all value added content. And if you're going to do it weekly, state that. If it's going to be every day, um, even better. But if you're going to do it, stick to it. White papers and ebooks are lengthier pieces of content, so they will take a lot more time and effort and maybe more team members, but also great sources of information for prospects and for leads. And if you can produce a really great white paper or ebook, they're going to really appreciate that and benefit from it. Videos are a fantastic way too. Videos are ranked higher on social media than any other type of social post. So if you can get a team member in front of a camera and talk about your product or service, do it. Webinars like these um, interact with your uh, prospects and leads in a more virtual way and do it in real time. Mix it up though. Don't just do one piece of content and stick to it. You should do a, a range of everything if you can. So optimize for search engines. Um, keywords, search intent, and long form content are really important for inbound marketing. You wanna make sure that you're getting ranked on Google or as high up that page as you possibly can. So keywords are, um, they're not nearly as important as they once were. But you should still take the time to do keyword research using Google and tools such as um, Google Analytics and different things like that. And whenever you're building out your personas, you can develop these keywords further and think about the things that they're typing into Google. So search intent. Google favors websites that match the user's search intent or the reason why a person is performing a Google search. For example, if a visitor visitors are landing on one of your website pages by using the query um, lead gen, you shouldn't talk about the risks of that on that page. Visitors searching for how much that would cost are generally past the stage of considering risks and complications. Um, so you should think about that whenever you're creating your content and website copy. And long form content will help get you ranked. It, Google tries to provide people with the best and the most relevant content. Um, it should be a good quality and the longer the better. So other things to consider whenever you're optimizing for search engine and looking at SEO. Voice search, it's now been over two years. Um, since voice search has really um, became important and popular, um, but you should uh, consider this whenever you're creating your content. So instead of maybe someone typing in a, a specific phrase, you have to think about how they would use that in a conversation and how they would be asking Alexa or any other of those kind of tools, how to Google that, Siri and the likes. So manipulative guest posting. So Google warned webmasters that using article marketing as, on a large scale link building tactic um, is against its guideline, guidelines. So you should be careful of this as it could result in a pe penalty. So the most vital piece of information from Google's guidelines has always been the recommendation to ask yourself, does this help my users? Would I do this if search engines didn't exist? So always try and think of that whenever you're guest posting and um, trying to get other people to maybe post on your blog. Linkless mentions, so Bing has confirmed that they track unlinked brand mentions and use them as a ranking signal and a patent by Google, along with observations from many other SEO experts, indicates that Google may be doing this as well. So as AI, artificial intelligence, begins to play a bigger part in rankings, it's not unreasonable to expect linkless mentions of this type to start playing a bigger role in search rankings. So you should encourage other people to mention your company, but not necessarily include a link and mobile first indexing. It's been nearly three years since Google announced that mobile searches had finally surpassed desktop search engines. Um, and just last year, Bright Age found that 57% of traffic among its clients came from mobile devices. So we all know mobile devices are on the rise and you should ensure that your website and all your landing pages, all your content is mobile optimized um, to help with your Google rankings. So quickly clearing up some SEO myths. Um, SEO changes more and more. It's an incredibly in-depth um, part of inbound marketing. So 
local SEO is more important than ever. And the introduction of an algorithm in 2014, this algorithm could change all the time. It means that Google will take location into consideration when it comes to search results. And you should make local SEO optimization a major element of your overall strategy, including taking steps to optimize a business page on Google+. Plus. If you haven't done that already, you really should. Um, you should change your approach to links. So in the past, achieving excellent SEO rankings involved building as many links as possible. This is still an important factor for rankings, yet now the emphasis has moved more from the quantity of links on the quality. So quality content will help you rank further. Quality links will obviously help you rank, um, and you shouldn't just throw in links for the sake of it. Your page setup, uh, a popular SEO misconception is that the more pages your website has, the more traffic you will get to your website. Just like the link building, um, your approach to pages should consider quality before quantity. So it's all about quality first. And your tech setup for SEO to be effective, there has to be some things that you may need your IT team to consider. So you should always liaise with those guys um, or girls and make sure that that is all set up correctly. Ranking in 2019, when it comes to SEO these days, ranking is no longer the be all and end all, although search, search engine results are at the top of the page perform best. They may not necessarily generate the most click throughs. In theory, you could rank very well for a certain keyword and generate lots of website traffic, but see no tangible benefits. So while you're still focusing on SEO and trying to rank as high up in Google as you can, there are still loads of other parts of inbound marketing that you should be focusing on as well and then managing your SEO. So it's a misconception that SEO just requires a few technical tweaks and that it is something that the IT team can take care of. It's not, it's an ongoing process. Like most things in marketing, the algorithm changes, the, um, the most up-to-date marketing tips and techniques change. So you should be up-to-date with these and make sure that all your entire team are as well. So number five, uh, you should promote on social media. Use Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, all these different social media sites and make sure, as we discussed already, the importance of multi-channel marketing. Make sure that you're creating a presence on all of these sites, not just one or focusing heavily on one. You can promote your content on your blog, you can share downloads, you can share news and run promotions, and you can address reviews and complaints really quickly and effectively. Moving on then, we're gonna talk quickly about nurturing leads with email marketing. Email marketing is a massive part of our uh, marketing automation here at Simplify. And a great lead nurturing email campaign is goal oriented So what action do you want your leads to take after reading your email? How do you want them to move down the funnel? What, what are the call to actions? Do you want them to move to the next stage in the buying process? Or do you wanna give them more content? So goal oriented it's segmented. So you wanna be able to provide every lead with precisely what they need. So you should segment your, segment your email list into categories, whether that's based on job title or um, annual income. It could be based on anything, um, but it should be segmented so you're creating personalized and customized content that will resonate with them. You wanna create value, always about that value. Why should they click? Why should they give you their email address? Why should they become a customer? Because you're giving extra value at all times and at all steps of the funnel. You wanna become friendly, come across as friendly and personalized. That is number one. Um, in most cases, people prefer casual, friendly emails. Um, maybe you shouldn't take yourself too seriously sometimes. Obviously, it depends on what sector and who you're targeting, but you should um, overall be friendly, approachable, um, and, and create that relationship based on that. And of course, personalization and customization is a huge marketing trend in 2019. And it's something that you can do really effectively with your email marketing. You can use their name, you can use their job title, you can use um, information that you know about them, whether that's their company or their company size. All this can be used in a, in a personalized email marketing campaign. And then, of course, you want to use lead magnets. So a lead magnet must be valuable. You should have an incentive behind it. So why should they give you their email address or their phone number? And you want to use it to convert that lead into a customer or convert the website visitor into a lead. So an example could be a free consultation, an ebook, a white paper, something that's really, really, really beneficial and that they're going to see real value from. And most importantly, 
Importantly, you should set SMART goals so that they should be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. There is no point in setting inbound marketing goals that you're never going to reach, you're going to become frustrated, and it's going to be a failure, and your CEO or your boss is going to say, we're not investing in that again. Um, you want to be able to measure it, see what's working and what's not. You want to make sure that it's relevant to your buyer persona and to your customer, and time-based so that you can measure it and monitor it really effectively. So as we chatted about before, Simplify Jaws have its own approach to inbound marketing and it's called the Simplify Methodology. So our methodology goes over identify, attract, engage, nurture, convert, and then we use measure and monitor tools, measure and monitoring tools to see what's working and what's not. So Like we said before, you identify your customer, you create that buyer persona, you use all the information that you know on them to create marketing messages, and this drives your content creation. You track them through multiple different uh, channels, not just one, and you find out where they hang out online, and you go there. Um, you engage with them, and you nurture them through a the buyer's funnel through automated email marketing, and then you convert them into loyal brand advocates for your company and then use insights to see what worked and what didn't and what you should replicate and what you should maybe focus on and what you should eliminate completely. So in next week's webinar, which is next Tuesday, you can see our identify area. So this is the first step in the Simplify methodology and it's a very much a strategy based area. You will look at the buyer, the persona builder. So like we talked, the persona is a fictional character based on your perfect customer. You will look at the buyer's funnel, um, you will look at the content hub and how you can use that simple organizational tool to create really effective content to segment it and repurpose it time and time again. And this is a quick look at the Simplify dashboard. So you can see up along the top here, the identify, attract, engage, leads, nurture, convert your contacts and your measure area. So that is our Simplify methodology. That is what our clients use every day, what we use every day. It grows our business from strength to strength. And we implement this in everything that we do. So you can see here on the dashboard, there's loads of different measurements. There. You've got your website, your digital ads, your journeys, your email, all of this and more. Um, but that will be discussed in next week's webinar. If you would like to sign up, you will have an email about it after this webinar. Again, I would just like to say thank you so much for taking the time to um, listen and watch this webinar. If you do have any questions, please pop them in the chat and I will get back to you. Um, and again, we are on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So be sure to follow us there. But thanks so much for joining and we hopefully will see you in the next webinar.